Look, I have no past lives. I had enough to get a 32 point build, and then I have 12 reaper points. Like, if you're new to the game, if you were new to DDO, you could easily do a minion build and go up to like R4, I'd say. I think R6 is like pushing it. Um, I'm also in like very normal gear. I have nothing that fancy. It's just all stuff that you'd find in like Feywild or Isle of Dread or, you know. So, um, the reason I wanted to play on this character and showcase it a little bit is because I think it's very friendly now for like a first life person in, who's new to DDO who wanted to do a minion build to actually do a minion build. The build that I do on my main on my warlock is sort of a variant so i'm like it's a very similar build if you guys have watched me play my warlock this basically is the same build so my warlock is an enchanter but technically i'm doing a minion build and the minion that i focus on on my warlock is this heart ally because my main is a triple completionist i don't really need to pull out any other hirelings i can pretty much just use the heart as my sole minion but on this character, because I don't have a lot of past lives, and because I'm a Storm Singer Bard, they'll benefit from this inspiration that gives them lightning attack on their on their hits. Um, all these minions become more effective. But because I am a you know I'm not a triple completionist, I don't have a lot of reaper points. I'm in light armor basically. Um, and I don't have high hit points. You know, I really can't get hit by a champ without dying. So that's exactly what happened. But I have threat reduction. So the, to keep myself from catching a lot of aggro. But DDO wasn't really designed to, like, have minion builds. It's not really a... Um, they don't want the basically the hirelings to play for you. So they're they're purposely stupid. Like, they've actually said that in, like, various live streams. The, the, the reason they don't go and update the minions to be smarter, hirelings to be smarter, is they don't want them to play for you. So, we're stuck with this really crappy system. If you've ever played, like, Diablo 4, it's a good example. Although, that minion system wasn't that good, but... The point is, like, the minions are a lot smarter. They'll go out and attack. They inherit a lot more of your b buffs. So that's the good thing about the Stormsinger Bard minion build. Any sort of variant of it, the, they, any of the minions that you use will benefit not only from your epic destinies, but they'll also inherit, like, this extra damage from all of the Stormsinger stuff. So, I mean, it's cool. It's a lot of fun. My, my build is a, a bit different than the one that was being talked about on the forum. But this build, I've been doing this for a long time on this character. I don't usually try to do R6 on anybody but my main. R6 or higher. Usually this character would only do like up to R4. Um, but it's really effective. So if you were like brand new to the game you would be able to, to easily do R1 to R4. You know, like, it's it's just one of those um, things. This is, like, the newest content. We'll see how we do. I mean, this character I've had forever, but I don't usually play it, so... Oh, the other difference in my build and the one that was being talked about recently is that I keep this top tier so I can have hold monster. Whereas the other minion build that was being talked about is top tier here. And they get the benefit of having the Sleet Storm procs, which is nice, but I don't really care about that, so... This character, sometimes I'll jump into pugs. I like being able to give out, like, the really good bard buffs. But you'll see, if I, like, drop this down to R4, it'll be a lot easier. This is the newest content. This is the hardest. 
And if I were new to the game and I, this is how I wanted to play, it certainly would be viable. Now, could I jump into R10 and do this? No, you saw it, like R8. The problem isn't that the minions die or that your damage isn't good. The problem is that you really can't take a hit because the stuff is doing so much damage that with 1500 hit points, you end up dead from one hit. So that's the problem. But if you had a triple completionist and you had a lot of like the built-in survivability from that, I think you could easily do R8, you know, R R6 or higher. No problem. Especially if you had like a lot of really good gear. This is where Morgrave is holding the Codex of the Infinite Planes. A complex magical mechanism has been placed next to the evil artifact. No doubt some kind of security device. Did she get the Bard buff? A member of the Twelve nods no. you over, eager to discuss your duties. That will be we be able to do this? I hope so. I mean, this is the newest content, so these mobs are super hard. R4, we should be completely fine. This is a lot of hirelings, but like I said, you know, this is an experiment just to showcase, like, on somebody, on a new, a new player with not a lot of past lives. Like I said, I only have two heroic past lives and one epic past life. I have no almost... Reaper points. Like, that is just two more Reaper points than getting the cloak on Hardcore League. So, I mean, this is... It's a... You know, in the world of Reaper points, that's nothing. Like, the person showcasing the minion build on the forums was... like He had, like, 150 or 160 Reaper points. So, like, really... And he was triple completionist. So, like, it's going to be a much different experience. But you don't need to have that. You can do a minion build. It's just you wouldn't be able to jump into, like, R8s. But you certainly could jump into doing, um, you know, harder content. It doesn't have to be R1, basically. The librarian suddenly grabs so this the is R4. What? No. I won't let him do that to you. We'll escape together. And we have to here. still take our time cuz like I said, we're we're super squishy. When you find your feet again, you see that the So we don't want anything to get near us. With the codex of the infinite planes. Or has the codex run off with the librarian? Don't try to stop us. We command the power of the flames! Here's a page out of the Feywild to slow you down! Summon Fey up here and spring to the attack. I'm just basically unloading my, um, my snow. Ball SLA, and then this sound burst I'm doing for a stun. The this is my epic strike, Stormcatcher. I have Reborn and Fire to do like a group heal. So you can see I can actually just gather everybody together and heal them all up. My main minion is this little Primal Heart ally. Um, she basically functions like the turret from an artificer. She doesn't move, but she will stand in one spot and throw out with my spell power and my mantle. She'll throw out a fire, light, alignment, and also a heal. So she does, um, she throws out regenerate. All of those have the, have the chance to proc a rejuvenation cocoon. And a matter of fact, anybody who casts like a positive spell has a chance to, to proc a rejuvenation cocoon. So, Albareth's heal spells will proc it. There's a Reaper, so I put a hold monster on the Reaper. And we'll let the... And we're basically just letting the minions deal with everything. I'm, I'm CCing stuff and doing my epic strike, but for the most part, it's just, you know... And this is R4. 
right? R6, the problem that we had wasn't that we weren't doing the DPS or whatever. It was that we couldn't afford to even let one monster get near us. So exactly like right now, like that dude almost... So it's really like how to deal with like crowd control. So I've got everything. Um, there's a dance on the Reaper. So I'll just let the my minions burn it down and then I'll try to get this champion. Hey, Glassjaw. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Um, like, this has been my build for a long time. It's just I never posted it. I never really thought anybody would care because people don't really like hirelings in DDO. But if I were to show you, if you're familiar with my um, my Warlock build, right, on my, on my Enchanter, my Enchanter is technically... Uh, Mary is technically a minion build because it's, if you it's not a surprise this is the exact build that I play now I'm altering this a little bit now on Mary I was I actually was doing that last night on the stream I'm not touching this or this but what I've done on the build because I already have knockdown immunity on Mary um, I went into exalted angel to get the wings and I'm experimenting, instead of using Renewal as the heal, I'm using the, the the Pillar as my Epic Strike. And then she has enough points to get, like, the Cure Moderate that's in Exalted. So, but this is basically, like, my my build. This build I, I do on all my characters, pretty much. And it's a minion build. It's basically, like, the heart is the, the central minion. I usually just don't run around with the actual hires out because, like I said, the community isn't really... It's, they sort of frown on hirelings, so... But I wanted to show, like, my my bard because I've been playing a Stormsinger minion build for a long time. It's just I never posted it. So I'm, I'm taking a chance to post it because... Um, people seem to like it. I, I was reading that post earlier, and that person's build is a little bit different than mine. Um, but the essence is similar, you know, at the at the heart of it. It's you're still like, you know, doing mid to high skull reaper, and you know, playing it with a bunch of minions. And their build is a little bit, like, uh, based more around the fact that they're a triple completionist, and they just have more. They're also a um, a half elf, utilizing the dilettante. I'm like, a, I don't have any past lives on me at all, so I'm like super squish. But I never played this character, and if I do, the the big difference is like they were quarter five here. I mean, top tier here. And I'm top tier here. Because if I pug this character out, I want to be able to give out the highest buffs. But I still have, like, the main Stormsinger buff. So they all have a chance to proc that lightning strike whenever they attack things. And then, like I said, like, this is the primary minion right there. They all share this mantle. So any positive uh, spell has a chance to proc my Rejuvenation Cocoon. Reborn in Fire I use is like a big AoE heal for everyone, you know, because it will heal everybody up and stuff, so it's pretty cool. I mean, is it, are you going to be able to do R10? No, like for my build, and it's just, a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that this character is just like pretty much... You know, with two heroic, one epic life, and then 12 reaper points, I, I'm just, like, super squishy. Like, look, I've got 77 PRR. I've got 91 armor class. I can't let anything get near me. So if you were on, like, your main triple completionist and you could get those stats up higher, I think you'd do a lot better and you'd be able to do a lot higher reaper. Obviously, we saw the dude do R8s. Um... But I think it's just a really interesting thing. The reason I wanted to show this is because I think it's totally viable for, like, a first-life 
new player to DDO to play a minion build like this. Like, it's totally something that you can do. Especially if you plan on, like, playing DDO and you want to solo a lot. See, one of the problems with DDO, you see how they're following me, they're not attacking that Reaper, yet I have them on attack every that they're just dumb. So unlike Diablo 4 as an example, well they'll just run around and just try to kill everything automatically, the only one that keeps attacking is the heart. So that's usually why that's the my like focus minion. It's just the heart, because that one has all the brains. These ones, they're all idiotic. So that's another reason why the community at large doesn't really use a lot of hirelings, because DDO has them purposely stupid. I think Severlin himself said that they don't want, you know, the, the hirelings to play for the player so that they keep them stupid. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like that that they said. So, but, I mean, you know, you can do it. Is it... I don't do it a lot, too, because I kind of find it a little frustrating to babysit all of the hires, but you certainly can play with a bunch of them. But on my main, I utilize the Heart Guardian all the time. Like, that's the, the primary part of my build. And I do, on my main, I do solo R8s, so... Yeah, as long as they don't see me, we're totally good. So I wanted to jump on and do a late stream just because I'm still tweaking some of the uh, some of the settings. So you guys will have to let me know how it looks. Um, right now, it says that Twitch is telling me that my connection is unstable. I don't know if it looks or sounds weird. I think it looks, it sounds good to me, but um, basically what I'll have to do is like tweak the settings a little bit. Could also be that we're having bad weather here in Boston, so... Suddenly find yourself completely submerged as even you with transported to the elemental plane of water in the wink of an eye. Evergreen, I'm still burning through mana. There's a champion. Okay, the champ is dead. Okay, we'll take the lost soul. Yeah, he. I saw that. Yeah, he's good. He's a very good player. I mean, his character is like way way farther along than even my main i think he how many reaper points does he have like 180 or something like that and triple completionist so he's got all the extra racials like it's just it's a huge power gain to have all that extra stuff 
I don't have on this character, you know, like I have to, I don't have any racial points except for maybe like the one tome that I got. I think an expansion gave us one tome. So like I'm utilizing points that would go into one of these over here in my racial tree just to get like the basic stuff. So it would be nice to have extra. And then I've said this a thousand times, like drow is great for flavor, but they're like one of the worst races. Uh, when you look at like all of the other cool stuff that all the other races have access to. So. That hero soul is definitely going to kill me if it gets close to me. Got really lucky on a snow proc. Yeah, here it comes. It's trying to kill me. It wants to get me. Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag, so I'm wondering if, um, you know, if Twitch is just sensing, like, the DDO lag itself. Because it's, like, snapping movement. So I have no I have no packet loss, so that's good. Uh, the ice effect that we're getting is a proc from my dinosaur weapon, by the way. But it works really well with this particular like with this bard. Snowball Storm. They made Snowball Storm so cool. A really good spell. There's a Reaper. I'll throw a hold on the Reaper. And it also heal everybody. There we go. Urges you to take the codex page he was studying. I think this is a shrine, right? I'm going to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been experimenting with new equipment, so. Hopefully everything looks good and sounds okay. You're not sure where this desolate clifftop might be. Judging from the demon population, though, it's probably some layer of the abyss. There's a crazy rock behind me. Oh, Carney. Oh, is that Fear Reaper? I'm definitely gonna die. Yeah, that's just, just insane.
Where did all this stuff come from? Well, this is okay, actually. It'll get me away from the Fear Reaper. Oh god, the Brock followed me? Bro. These things are crazy. <laughs> I'm definitely dead. I'm gonna try to get up this ladder, although that's probably impossible. Yeah, oh, there's the Reaper. I don't know how I aggroed literally everything in the entire zone. But this is the newest content, so it's the hardest. Yeah, Varrocks, they're just so... I actually wouldn't, if somebody joined DDO right now new, and they're like, I want to play this, I would say, you should check out Dragon Lord. <laughs> Way stronger <laughs> right now. But still, I mean, I think you can still have fun. It would be cool if I could show, like, I'll try to show exactly what I mean with the problem with the, with the hirelings. I think a good example is that pyramid fight. The dragon here? Yes, dragon is here. Right, I can tell because I can tab target his chest. But it won't be as good a, a demonstration. So it's harder to see things because the area you fight him is smaller. Okay, the crest is up top. Oi. If only the jump re responded to when I push it. Jump. Now jump. Okay, there it goes. Instead of doing that little lag thing that it does sometimes. Okay, so we've got that crest. And there's the other one. It's one of the reasons I didn't do the uh, Snow Peaks jumping thing. I tried, but the jumping just, for some reason, I get like a lag when I jump. I think it might be the Xbox controller itself. All right, so these dudes here. So I need to ha uh, get my minions out. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, darling, go get them. Alright, so put them all on attack. And they should all go attack, right? Alright, well, that one's not. So I'll target him and I'll say go attack. Right? Okay, so they should all attack.
Let me give him buffs. It'll help keep him healed. So hopefully I can kind of replicate what's going on. Yeah, all right. So you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe it's because he teleported. But now they all require me to tell them to go attack again. Well, not all of them. Teal figured it out. But the Scarecrow is just standing here staring at me. So now I have to basically target him and say, okay, everybody go attack him again. And it's like constantly doing this. But I just did it. Now they came back to me. So this is what I'm saying. Like, clearly there's something wrong in this coding. I didn't say come to me. I said go attack him. Go attack him. I've got him targeted. Go attack. Go attack. Go attack. All right. Now they all go attack. That looks good. All right. Let's continue giving out our bard buffs. I don't know if I already got teal. Did I get teal already? No. Hey, Teal. No, no, no. Don't come to me. Go attack the dude. So this is one of the reasons why I don't really do play with hirelings or do, like, minions. See? Like, why all of a sudden did they stop? Is it because he teleported? Maybe. But that's still annoying. Like, that you have to do this sort of babysitting of, like, commands. I guess you could make a macro. If you were really gonna do this all the time, like I know people like uh, multi-box with six computers, you know, six clients. Um, so they probably, if anybody's gonna do that, they probably could set up a macro to handle something like this, but it's just super annoying. And I did tell the scarecrow to go attack and he's just still just standing there like, go attack, dude. thing about the scarecrow too he's the one that i want to always attack because he's got intimidate right like so he's the one that i would use to keep like the npcs occupied drag the attack to my bar and just click it and control click it yeah you could do that sure So it looks like whenever he warps, it like it drops aggro and resets. Uh, so I'm not sure if maybe that's something specific to these, you know, demons. And maybe it only happens when a mob does an aggro drop. It's just in this game, like, okay, now why are they all coming back to me? I don't know. Oh, here he goes. Maybe he did his drop and then he teleports. Like, it's just this kind of wonky stuff. Yeah, anything they can't path to resets them. So it's different than, like, a game like SWOTOR, where you have, like, a really solid aggro mechanic, and if you set your hire to go off and attack something, it goes off and attacks something, or if you set it to heal, it heals. Like, there's no wonkiness in it. Like, this... Here's my muse. Maybe it's because he's up on that rock. But then why is Teal still up there? Like, it's, so Teal is the S tier companion, basically. Because whatever it is that wonked out these doesn't affect Teal. I don't know. I don't know, man, but it's annoying. So it's one of the reasons that I don't really play this character or do this that often. It just becomes too, like, you know, too annoying to babysit all this. And yeah, there you could certainly automate what I'm doing with this clicking and make it a lot easier. But like, let's be honest, there are people out there who are clickers, right? They don't they don't keep buying anything. So. I, don't know, I kind of was thinking that they did it, they coded it like that on purpose so you couldn't just like have out six 
five hires and just AFK and let them run around and kill everything. Like they're purposely sort of st stupefied. But, you know, I mean, they did it. <laughs> they did eventually do it. Oh, we got a Mythic 2 Falchion. That's cool. Yeah, so... Issues like that... Yeah, I agree. It would have gone a lot quicker if he wasn't immune to lightning. So I don't really like the minion that I, I've said this a few times now, but the minion that I primarily focus on is the heart ally. Specifically because I don't have to worry about any of that other stuff and I can, you know, use it. Like, it will get aggro. It doesn't have threat in the... You know, like, it's not... And what I mean is it doesn't have, like, an intimidate that you can actually taunt with it. Like, it might get, like, DPS threat or something like that. But I'm pretty sure it just inherits everything from you. So if it attacks something, I think whatever it attacks is going to go after you. But I haven't even, like, played, um, you know, like, I've never done the saga on this character. I don't really play this character that much. This character is very old. I can show you guys something that's quite, like, interesting because this character is so old. And this character actually has, like, one of the old transmogs. Oh, actually, I can't equip it that way. I have to actually physically equip it. So this fearsome robe of invulnerability has an armor kit on it. You can see right at the top there on the, in the description, it says um, binds to account due to appear, appearance kit. Those are the old um, armor transmogs that they used to have in the game uh, way, way back. Like I'm going back to like 2007. And you used to buy them. They functioned almost exactly like World of Warcraft, if you ever played World of Warcraft. And so what it would do is it would take the, the item and add a skin to it. So there's no way to get that appearance off of this robe. I, I, otherwise, I would have. I've actually asked SSG like 20 times over the years for them to give us something that we could take these old kits off and put them on another piece of gear because they don't sell this particular look anymore. Like, you cannot get this. They stopped selling it years ago, like maybe over a decade ago. You can get a, a blue one that's sort of similar to this, but you can't get the black anymore. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it would be nice if I could apply this to like a new set of armor, but I can't. The only other place you can see these armor, this armor skin is in some of the hirelings have some of these old transmogs because it was around the same time when they were selling these kits that they introduced the hirelings. So a lot of the hirelings are wearing this sort of old stuff. The, the other thing I've emailed them about is, okay, great. If you're not going to make it so that I can recover my old transmog kit, the old armor kit, why not just put these old skins in the store as traditional, cos like modern cosmetics? Why is it that we can't get these old skins anymore at all? I don't understand. Like, people would certainly buy them, right? Like, 
why can't we win them in gold rolls? Like, I don't understand why this is the only... And you know what else happened? For the longest time, they fixed it, finally. I don't know if it had anything to do with me asking them or if other people were asking them, but they did a patch a while back, and I'm going back a couple years, but that broke the armor kit. So what happened, like, one day I logged in and put on this robe, and it looked like the cheese ball robe. Like, I can actually turn the kit off. Like, that's what the robe looks like normally. But if I turn the kit on, then there's the kit, right? But one day I logged in a couple years ago and the kit wouldn't show. And so I filed a ticket and said my armor kit's not working. You know, and I bought back in the day, like I bought a bunch. I had like 20 or 30 of them. I still have a few of the un them unused. I'm not sure if this character has any in the bank unused. Take a look. They may all be on my main. But this character has a bunch of old stuff. You can see in my in my reincarnation cache, I have a bunch of those old um, fire shrines that we used to be able to pin on the ships, but they no longer spawn. How many years ago did they get rid of these? Well, I still have them. So if I when I do like um, you know like racial lives, I'll I'll pin six of these on my ship so I can get, like, fire buffs at low level. And basically, now, you don't really need these. I could get rid of all these um, because you can get pretty much close to it by going and doing Tangle Root and getting the ship buffs. But because they got rid of them, I got a bunch of them. And then this here, this Battle Master no longer spawns. But what he did, if you clicked on him, he gave you a buff, and the buff would actually boost a couple different skills one of them being haggle it would boost your haggle in a way that i can't figure out if it there's another way to boost it so i picked up a bunch of him because at a time i don't care now about plat but way back like i used to like to do my haggle bot in order to get um you know like plat and stuff and so then I have a bunch of cookies from the event, and I have a bunch of these Merlin spoons that I found over the years, the Keeg Tom's ointment. Like, some of these are really old, and some of these people found on Hardcore. I guess they still spawn. And then people know that I collect hair dye, so I have a bunch of dye. Most of her bank is just filled with cookies. And these cookies, keep in mind, are overflowed from... I have a cookie jar right here. But it doesn't hold a lot. Like, it doesn't hold enough. They should have made it to where it would hold, like, thousands. It doesn't. Like, it's full. So this is all the cookie overflow. But, I mean, that's just years and years of doing, um, you know, that event. Getting cookies and stuff. Um, some Something else that I have that's super old. Like, I have those rate of reward boxes that I never used. And then I have these. These haven't spawned in the game. I don't even know how long ago they got rid of this stuff. We're probably talking like maybe 15 or, or 14 years ago. The last time that these, these things here spawned. These used to be component, like spell components. And at some point, uh, Turbine decided that they didn't want to use them anymore. And so they got rid of them, but I I never threw them away. I, I kept them. It's very uh, odd. I, I would be really shocked if anybody else hung onto this stuff. I'm sure somebody did, right, out there. But I don't even remember what it was used for. You could probably Google it and find out, but... Yeah, it looks like I don't have any of the armor kits on me. I have to would have to go and find them on the other account. It's too bad. But, I mean, you can't trade them. They're bound to account anyway. So that's another thing that's lame. It's not like I could put it on the auction house and try to sell it. It's, I can't, there's nothing I can even do with it. I could, I guess I could use it, but... Why would I do that? Because then that kit is tied to that piece of armor and the game changes so much, the meta changes so much that, you know, like a great example is 
this is the legendary esoteric initiate set which is really good good if you're on like an alchemist or something like that right you probably use this but will that be like the go-to armor for an alchemist because this is level 29 where they're going to raise the level cap to what is the next le level up thing is like level 34 when we get mithrena or something like that and who knows what new armor is going to come out with that new expansion so likely maybe an alchemist would no longer wear that and then i'm stuck with the armor kit being on this piece of armor and i can't move it around so it'd be really nice if they gave us something that would allow us to reacquire these old kits because like i said this isn't the only one i have this is the only one on this particular tomb but if i were to look at all my really old characters uh like this one then uh it would be um you know you'd see a whole bunch of the other looks like the heavy armor this is the robe but there was like a heavy armor there was a medium armor um variations of them kind of exist right now if like you do gold rolls you can win armor some armors that look similar but they're not the same color or they look a little bit different but like like you can get this armor right now if you I think you can go to the store and buy it, but the problem is it comes with like a shoulder and a chest thing on it. They no longer sell this version that doesn't have any of the extra stuff on it. I think the one that they sell also has like a belt thing. So not that it looks bad, but it changes the overall like look of it. Like, you know, cause it just adds a lot more noise to the outfit. So while it's good, I don't think it's as cool as this one. anyway yeah so that that's the minion build that i play but i don't usually play this character so but i just wanted to like show it um most of the time i'm either playing my main or i'm like doing something that is related to like a project that I'm doing for YouTube or something like that, like the Dragon Lord that I just did and finished. Although I think I, I was talking about it, I might do a, um, I might do like racial past lives on my main as a Dragon Lord and try to do like a different build every life, like a two weapon fighter, a two handed fighter, and then a, a strength based dagger thrower. I think that might be what I do. And I'm not sure which I'll start with. Uh, but on my main with all the past lives and stuff, like, I think it would be a lot easier for me to try some weird variations as opposed to what I did with the charisma based first life character, which I think is super viable. Like, if you're watching, you're probably not new to DDO if you're watching a DDO stream on Twitch. But if you were for some reason, I think it's a really viable. Like, you wouldn't normally hear of somebody doing a charisma-based fighter, but I had a lot of fun, and it was really strong. So I definitely think it's it's worth taking a look at. Is it the strongest out there? Probably not, but it was still really cool. Ah, the kit. The kit is just called an armor kit. Yeah, I mean... Charisma Ravager. That's cool. Yeah, if you do Purple Dragon Knight. Yep, people were saying that Purple Dragon Knight would have a lot built into it. I, you know, I'm really hopeful that when they release the Mythdranner expansion that they are um, going to address, like, the, the cosmetics and the character models from the Forgotten Realms and sort of update those for us i don't think that they should get rid of it i think what should they should do is what they did in lord of the rings online where they have the old character model and then they make a new one and then you can pick like over in lotro i can use their new high elf model which is really cool if i if i want to make mary look like one of the newer elf models or i can use the old elf model uh that i you know used to play on prior to their introducing the new stuff 
Yeah, that's really cool. 140, that's a really high Intimidate. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It looks like there's a lot of groups right now, so I think what I want to do is jump on my thrower and see if I can get into a group. 